a gifted athlete, just one who always worked as hard as he could to improve. So, so I said, why should GBS be anything different? And this is going to be my new sport. In that moment, I decided I was going to be the best damn patient anyone had ever seen. Prompting many, are you always this sweaty? Comments? <laughs> the truth of the matter is I didn't feel I had time to be sick. I had a family to get home to and soon enough two children to take care of. Um, I'm going to try to get through this part, but this part's kind of hard. So as determined as I was, it was not without heartache and emotional distress. The worst of it came when my two-year-old son, Carter, came to visit me in the hospital. There I am lying flat on my back, and Carter wanted me to lift him up onto the bed. Obviously, that was impossible. He was placed on my lap, and then he asked me to read him a book. And I said, Daddy, Carter, Daddy's arms don't work. You're going to have to turn the pages for me. He happily agreed, and we were able to read together. The worst part of it was when it was time for him to leave. He wanted a big hug from his daddy, but I couldn't lift my arms to do it. Not being able to give my own son a hug will go down as one of the worst moments of my life. My family was there to assist me, but the damage was already done to my psyche. The other struggle was the fact that I could no longer care for myself at all. I never asked anyone for anything in my entire life. I can't had never been included in my vocabulary, but now I was forced to have help with everything, including the daily things that you really don't want help with. I'm sure you all know what I mean. <laughs> uh, in other words, everything required help, and it was really difficult for me to accept that help. And for some reason, Concord Hospital must have the driest air on earth. I had a nose itch that would drive people crazy. <laughs> and since I had some shoulder and tricep strength, I was able to kind of fling an arm up and hope it caught on my head and just try to rub as best as I could. <laughs> But unfortunately, it was too exhausting. And every time I tried to do that, I'd end up in a pool of sweat. Um, so as heavy and as crazy as that whole time was, it wasn't up without some kind of lighthearted moments. One of the problems I had was my finger strength was really, really bad. It was so bad, I was unable to push the red call button on my bed. And I also couldn't work the remote. And I, and I know what you're thinking, oh, so why is it always about the remote control of men? <laughs> but it was the fall of 2009, and the Baseball World Series was going on, and it was the Phillies versus the Yankees. So they put the game on for me, and watching it, the Yankees took a lead in, into the ninth inning, and I said, there's no way I'm going to watch the Yankees celebrate, because I've hated the Yankees my whole life. <laughs> So, so as the ninth inning came about, it was clear that the Yankees were going to win. I was trying desperately to change the channel. <laughs> there was no way I was going to watch them celebrate. Yes. I tried the call button, but I couldn't apply enough pressure. I tried the remote, still nothing. I tried to roll over onto it and hope it would turn it off, <laughs> fall to the floor, or it would make enough noise that someone would come in. I did everything but yell and scream because I didn't want to look that selfish and the unit was full. I now regret that. Um, <laughs> as the final out was recorded, I had to suffer through the celebration. Oh my God. I had to watch the playback of Derek Jeter's reaction, <laughs> Alex Rodriguez's reaction, the dugout's reaction, and all of the nauseating post-game press conferences. <laughs> So thanks a lot, Guillaume Syndrome. <laughs> Not only did you paralyze me, but you also managed to punch this Red Sox loyalist square in the face. <laughs> so another funny moment came about courtesy of my real close friend Blake. He's, he, I was the best man at his wedding about a month prior, and he's one of the most positive people I know. After all my visitors had left that first full day that I was in the hospital, he had come for a visit. Normally he's very quick-witted, lots of positive energy, but I could tell he was really struggling with what he was going to say to me, um, considering my state. We chatted for a minute or two until my nurse for that evening came in. She was a really sweet person and dropped it gorgeous. <laughs> so think of her as Cameron Diaz or Reese Witherspoon or whatever beautiful blonde celebrity you, you, you like. So she'd come over to me to see if I was doing all right in her nurturing and caring way. I told her I was doing fine, and I turned around, and she turned around and left. 
when I looked back over at Blake, his eyes were bulging out of his head, <laughs> and he looks at me and says, dude, you are so lucky. <laughs> So immediately I started laughing and I said, oh, yeah, I'm mostly paralyzed with an itch on my nose so bad it's making my eyes water, but I'm the lucky one. <laughs> so as I said, during the hospital stay, I had those five treatments of the IVIG, and they were trying to get me ready to go over to the rehab hospital because I was medically stable. <laughs> so they decided on my last day that it was time for me to take a walk. I really thought they were kidding, but they weren't. My feet could not flex. My calves were so constricted it was painful. And my feet pointed slightly downward. This made just standing flat-footed feel like someone was trying to slice open my calves. I started sweating like crazy just at the mere standing there, because you don't really realize how many muscles are working when you're just standing one place. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Picture, if you will, this, is, this was me. I had a nurse on my left, a nurse on my right, a nurse with a gate belt holding on to me for dear life behind me, and one in front of me with one hand under each sweaty armpit. God bless her. <laughs> and then I had a nurse's assistant following the wheelchair behind me, just in case. So my inaugural walk, they decided I was going to walk all the way to the nurse's station which was about 15 feet away. It probably took about five or 10 minutes, and I can't call it walking, because that means picking up a leg and putting it down. So it was more of a shuffle. And by the time I had made it there, you, you would have thought I'd run the Boston Marathon. I mean, dripping, soaking with sweat. All my muscles are quaking, and I'm completely exhausted. It was at this very moment that my boss walked around the corner and looked at me, and he froze. He had known that I was having some issues, but he didn't know it was this bad. And I turned and looked to the nurse and said, do you think I'm faking it well enough to get out of work? <laughs> um, so that was kind of the first of my real treatments there. And uh, I'd also like to share with you some kind of funny quotes. People say some pretty funny things to you when you're sick. Whether they mean them to be funny or not, here are a few that I thought were hilarious. For some reason, some people in the medical field speak first and think second. Uh, a few of these quotes I would caution you not to say to your future patients. The first is, you know, you're my first GBS patient. <laughs> I said a very enthusiastic nurse. And I said, great. So glad I could help. <laughs> so in, in saying that, you know, I had several people come up to me and quiz me about all, all that was going on with me thinking that the diagnosis was really cool. And I can tell you first off that it was really not cool. And it was probably one of the darkest times of my life. And I felt like an episode of House. Um, one of the other funny things was, sorry, I don't usually feed people your age. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, she didn't really mean it that way. But it's the way it came out. And the last one is, wow, that's shockingly bad. <laughs> and that had to do with my pinch strength, an OT said to me during one of my sessions. I gave her a lot of crap that later. <laughs> the other very funny moment uh, was courtesy of my lovely wife, who, and when I explained before that, you know, there are a lot of things you don't really want help with, <coughs> there was one person that I would allow this help from, and she was this wonderful, wonderful LNA that I worked with, and she had, she was the only person that could make something like this feel less terrible. So she had been out for a couple of days, so I had gone through all my treatments and everything, and I hadn't showered in a couple of days. So Gretchen saw Darlene come in, and she goes, ooh, I'm so glad you're here so you could take a shower with my husband. <laughs> So here's the next section is the, the real nuts and bolts of, of the OT section. So during my stay at the rehab hospital, I was paired up with several OTs, none better than my primary OT, Melissa. My initial introduction to her is a moment I won't forget anytime soon. As Melissa walked in to meet me for the first